Alright. Oh, what? You just dis. Okay, phase right through my face. You're doing some Goku instant transmission shit. I wish it would show you walking backwards like it did a second ago. <laughs> that would be great. Maybe I can just play the video in reverse and then... You're doing like an Ash Blade Storm. <laughs> Hey what's up you guys, it's Vance here from Starcom, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Hulk smash of the Warframe universe, and that would be the Wukong. Now if you don't want to wait for your clan to finish the research from the Nitnik Strax, which is pretty much a time wall you can pick up Wukong for 275 platinum with a reactor already installed. Regardless of how you get Wukong, I chose to run with Steel Charge, Handspring, Vitality, Rage, Prime Flow, Bleeding Expertise, Streamlined, Prime Continuity, Blind Rage, and Narrow Minded. Vitality is going to get your health pool up there, while Rage is going to be converting 40% of the damage into energy for you. The reason why this is so important for this build is because every time you die while using Defy, it's going to half your energy essentially. And as much damage as you'll be taking to your health, you'll be putting that back into your energy. So it's completely necessary. Prime Flow is going to ensure that your energy pool is as high as it can possibly be. Bleeding Expertise and Streamline is going to make it so that it's efficient for you to stay in Defy and Primal Fury for as long as possible. Blind Rage is obviously going to make your powers do a lot more damage. The Narrow Minded and Prime Continuity struck me off guard. In fact, I even had to go into other people's YouTube videos to see why these duration mods were so viable. The one thing that I found is that Defy will grant you a certain amount of time of immunity to damage after you fall in battle. What I did not know is that the duration mods will affect how long you're going to be invulnerable. Now with these two different modes that drain your energy, one could guess that you would be immune to knockdown. This is not true, and this is why I use Handspring. Skipping straight to my melee, I chose to run with Tipito. The reason why I chose to run with Tipito is because it's a pretty good crit weapon, and it speeds up very quickly, which scales into the melee effectiveness of your Primal Fury. The only thing to note about this build is that you must, 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 must run a Life Strike. The reason for this being is because Defy is only good to grant you your life back until you run out of energy. But who said anything about your health? In those situations where you need to stay in Primal Fury because there's simply too many enemies crowding the pod or, or whatever the reason, you can Life Strike and put your health back up to where it should be. Life Strike will hurt your energy pool, but keep in mind that if you still have health to drain away, you can still convert 40% of that back to energy to keep the Primal Fury going. So therein lies the one only problem with this build, and the only problem I was having to begin with, and that is why I chose to run with Rakta Serenos. See, in those instances where I am running out of energy and I am running out of health while I'm in my Primal Fury and my Defy, I'm going to choose to take off my Primal Fury just for a minute and start killing things with the Ractoceranos. Not only is it comparable to Dread, having good crit and good status, but it's going to do an AoE Syndicate benefit 
which is going to restore a portion of your energy. So you can get your energy pool back up to where it belongs while using Live Strike to get your health pool back up to where it belongs. Using this combination, you can't go wrong. You'll never be brought down in battle, and people will worship the ground that you stand upon because you'll end up reviving pretty much all of your teammates. This whole build has my seal of approval. And we've yet to even review our companion. Now I know that I've covered Otogi, my Kubro, in past videos for Valkyr, but I've never gone too far into depth with Otogi and why she's such a badass. For one, the Bite mod, not even maxed out, will do plus 300% critical chance, plus 200% critical damage. The Maul, 3 away from maxed out, will do plus 240% melee damage. Oftentimes, I see my dog one-shotting heavies. It confuses me as to why so many people are after Chessa. Because while Chessa will bring you things, a Kubro that can dig will just dig you up whatever you need. There's been instances where I was out of ammo, and my Kubro dug me up an ammo pack. There's been instances where I needed energy, and my Kubro dug me up 75 energy. There's been instances where I need help, and she dug me up a lot of health orbs. This is why I chose to run the Sahasa Kubro, and not the Chessa. Link armor, link health, and link shields provide that the Kubro stays a little bit tanky during battle, and then pack leader is an essential, especially for melee warframes. Pack leader makes it so every time you strike an enemy, you're converting some of that damage into health for your Kubro. It's as good as a life strike for a Kubro. And the plus side is, it's not as rare as life strike. So is Wukong geared towards high level defense missions, high level survival, high level regardless of anything? Without a question of a doubt, you don't even have to run some of the builds that I use with Wukong. I've said before in the past, there's a lot of wrong ways to build with Warframes. There's not a whole lot of wrong ways to build with Wukong. He goes the distance. This is one of the best frames that have been released in the game so far. He's high DPS, and he's very tanky. He's such a good frame that I can't at all recommend him for low level gameplay, as you're just going to get so unbearably bold. So if you found this video helpful, moonwalk your way over to my subscribe button, hit like, comment, share it, join our clan via the description details, and uh, until next time, 